I'm Emma. I am the Technical Services Supervisor here at Eckert Public Library. And tonight we're going to learn how to knit. And we're just going to get a sort of a chance to talk and just enjoy learning something new with each other. If you are watching this or if you participate, once it goes live, on, not live, once it goes on our YouTube page, you can go down there and put in your entry for Read, Do, Explore. And this is going to take us about an hour because what we're going to do is we're going to learn how to start to knit. We're going to work our way through some of a pattern. And then before we leave, I'm going to show you how to end your knitting so that whenever you're ready, you can do that on your own. So to get started, we want to make sure we have our supplies. And what we need is our yarn. So if you picked up a kit from EPL, you should have one skein of green yarn and one of white yarn. If you purchased your own yarn, just make sure that you have two different colors. You need to have your knitting needles. The pattern calls for a size seven. If you have bigger or smaller, that's fine. If you have bamboo like these, or if you have metal, that's fine. Just whatever works for your hands or whatever you happen to have around. And if you are planning to complete your project soon, you just want to make sure to have some basic needles because you're going to use that to weave it in. And then we have our pattern. And this is what we're going to use tonight. So, we all ready to get started? I'm excited. By the way, I'm here too. <laughs> Hi, I'll, Andy. If you have any questions, if anybody has, has any questions, I already post, posted this, but if anybody has any questions, please feel free to ask them. All cool. right. So to get started, we want to take our first color, which for us is this white yarn. And we're going to make sure to have a decent length. I typically kind of measure, I hold it right up about my shoulder, down to my arm like this. And that's about how much of a tail that you want. What's a tail? A tail is the end of your pattern. So extra thread that hangs off when you start. And you don't want to cut it off because at the end, we're going to do something called weaving it in. And that just makes sure that your knitting doesn't unravel as soon as you finish it. So make sure that you've got about this much yarn. And then you're going to want to pinch your fingers. So we have our fingers pinched. And we're just going to kind of create a loop around our fingers like this. Just a simple loop. Just cross it. And we're going to grab the end that we're not pinching. And pull it through. So again, we're just taking this tail. We're going to take these two fingers put our yarn over them and gather them so that it looks like this, right? Just an empty sorry. space. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm trying to make it better. <laughs> I'm also directionally challenged. So. And then once we have that, we're just going to twist so that we have a cross now. So it looks almost like a elongated figure eight. And we're gonna 
open it, stick our fingers in between, and grab the yarn that's not pinched in our hand and pull it through so that we have a loop like this. Do we have any questions, Andy? Anybody have any questions so far? That seems like it's an important part. Yeah, and it's kind of hard to start. Looks like no questions so far. Okay. Definitely speak up, say, hold on, or say, say wait, or whatever. Say something that, uh, that, that um, lets us know that you have a question, and we can, we can hold up or we can repeat. Hopefully we can repeat something. Yep, we, we have an hour, and I, I did that so that if we need to stop and go back two or three times to cover something, we've got the time to do that. So now that we have our loop, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna do what's called casting on. And that's when we put it on the needle. So to do that, we're gonna take our needle and we're gonna put the loop over it. And we're gonna separate out our yarn because we want on the right side, the yarn that's attached to the ball. So on your right, the yarn that is not going to end. On your left side, your tail. And you're gonna pull on your tail until you've tightened it. Not super tight. See, you can kind of see how there's a little bit of room there. And then we're gonna go ahead and start a cast on. And to do that, go ahead and take, oh, my yarn is everywhere today. Go ahead and take your needle in your left hand. And you're gonna take your other needle. Actually, I lied. We're not using the other needle yet. <laughs> of hold this in between our hands and find the tail of our yarn. And then we're going to take our thumb, like we're hitchhiking, and we're going to loop it under. So our yarn's here, we're just taking that thumb and looping it under so that it looks like this. anyone asking for us to stop for a sec? Not yet. Okay. So once we have that, we're going to take the needle that's now sitting in our right hand. We're going to put it right at the crease of our thumb here and slip it underneath the yarn so that now you have two loops on your yarn the one that we made, and then this one that our thumb is still attached to. And that's part of the, the tail that, you're, that you just put your thumb around? Yes. Okay. So once we have that, we're gonna take the yarn that's not our tail. So the yarn that's attached to the ball of yarn. And we're gonna wrap it back to front. So we're gonna take it act like we're gonna go around and wrap it around our thumb. But instead of going over our thumb, we're gonna go over the needle right above our thumb. We're gonna switch this needle. It's gonna, your, your, your needle's gonna move back and forth, back and forth on your hands and that's okay. Now this little loop that we made at the beginning, it's bigger. We're gonna take that and loop it over over the top of the needle so that it goes over the loop we just made. And we're gonna take our tail and pull. And now we have a stitch on there. And we're gonna do that again. So we're gonna take our yarn 
we're gonna hitchhike our finger underneath it. We're gonna put our needle at the crease of our thumb and hitch our thumb to our needle. We're gonna take this yarn, the one attached to our ball of yarn. We're gonna go behind the needle and then over it, right over the top of our thumb. We're gonna take that big loop now from where our thumb was hitched to our needle. We're gonna slide it over. And we're gonna pull on our tail. And that is another one. Any questions she had, Mandy? Ooh, we had a couple more join, it looks like. Um, I wanna know if we need, uh, do, does anybody need us to go back over that? The stuff that we just did, um, kind of the beginning here so far. Does anybody need us to go back over the, the beginning? We got a message saying that they, somebody couldn't find it. So we want to make sure that the link is there. So uh, if you are, yes, please. Okay, so um, yeah, can we go over the beginning part again there? Yeah, so do we, are we at a point where we need to go back and show how to make the loop or do we just need to go through putting stitches on the needle? Let's see what we hear back from that. Give me a couple seconds. Just got just got in, so I want to make sure that we're at a, a spot where the spot where we need to be. We've okay. got enough time. Let's see. Let's go back to. What are you here? Hello. Can I do? What does this do? This does that. What does this do? <laughs> the loop. The loop, please. There we go. That's kind of cool. Yeah. So it says. They said the loop, please. The loop. Okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and take the stitches off of my needle. If you've added your stitches already, feel free to leave them on. I'm just gonna redo it. So, for a loop, we're going to take our first color, whatever color that is, and what I do, kind of wrap some a little bit of yarn around the edges of your fingers, and pull the yarn up to your shoulder and then pinch it right at your shoulder so that you've got this little section of thread about that long. And that's called your tail. This is yarn that's gonna hang off the edge of your project until you're finished because we do something special called weaving it in. And that makes sure that it doesn't just unravel the moment you stop knitting it. Find where your fingers were pinched, which is where that yarn met your shoulder. And now take yarn from the other side. So the yarn on the side that's still attached to the ball of yarn. Take your fingers, almost like you're gonna piece sign it, but not quite, and lay the yarn over your fingers so that it looks kind of like this. And see how right now it's just kind of an empty loop. We're simply gonna take our fingers and cross it. So that now we have kind of an elongated figure eight. It looks like an hourglass. Yeah. Like a, like a, yeah. Everyone following so far? I don't need to go back, cover anything. How are we, how is that? Are we good? I mean, uh... I'm gonna say we're probably good. Yeah, I, I realized I after I ask. asked that that people probably have it's their gonna, hands busy. It's gonna take, yeah, yeah, sorry, that's, that's yeah, that's a good point. Um, it's because there is a bit of, a, like I said, there's a bit of a six second delay for us yeah. until we get a reply if you're like on the ball responding. So yeah. um, we'll just wait a little bit. That's that's what the, any kind of the, the, the blank airspace is. I don't wanna yeah. leave too much. So once we've got this elongated figure eight, I'm just gonna tilt my hand and get my thumb in there as well. 
so that it opens up and I can kind of puppet it. Because I wanna go ahead and grab the piece of yarn that I'm not pinching. So the yarn that's still attached to your ball of yarn, that's what I wanna grab. And I'm just gonna grab it and I'm gonna pull it through so that I have something like this. I'm gonna wait and give us a little bit of blank space, see if anyone has questions, because I know it took me forever yeah. to learn how to make that simple. <laughs> so what I see here is that you've got the, the, the yarn that's on the right side. Mm -hmm. um, that is attached to the ball, and then it goes and attaches to that loop that you've made, which is kind of a loose loop, isn't it? Yep. Uh, and then it goes off to the left, and that's just the loose kind of tail, is like what you called it. Yep. Okay. All right. Think we're good to move on to casting on again, Andy? I think so. Haven't seen anything. I don't think I've seen anything new here. Uh, new, new, any new comments? But again, feel free to leave any comments. All right. So now that we've made this loop, and if you have already cast on stitches, this is where you're gonna wanna start paying attention again so that we can keep adding stitches. We're gonna take our loop and we're gonna put it on one of the needles. And we're gonna grab the tail, so the, the, the yarn that has an end. And we're kinda gonna pull on that and the yarn that's attached, so that we're just kind of using it to cinch it up to create a loop. All right, so once we have that, we want to move, I can never get my yarn right. We're going to move the needle to our right hand. We're going to take this tail, we're going to hold it out and make sure it's nice and taut. Now, we're gonna take our thumb, we're gonna put it up just like we're hitchhiking. And we're gonna go under and then up again. So we're just like, whichever direction works for you. And once our hands look like this, we're gonna take our knitting needle to the crease of our thumb and we're gonna slip it underneath the yarn so that we've kind of hitched our thumb to our needle. Once we've done that, we're gonna kind of shift our hands so that we're now holding the needle in our left hand, because we're gonna take our right hand and grab the yarn that's attached to the ball of yarn. We're gonna take it up back, and then over the needle. Almost like we're gonna go and put another loop on our thumb, but we're not gonna loop our thumb, right above it. You're gonna shift the needle again, and now you can see that loop our thumb's in, it's kinda nice and stretchy. And that's what we want, because we're gonna take this loop, we're gonna slip our thumb out of it, and we're gonna pop it over the top. So now we have what looks kind of like a tangled mess, but we're gonna take the tail and pull, and then we're gonna take the other side and pull. And now we have two loops. And so now we've cast on two stitches. Now our pattern calls for 38 stitches. I am gonna work in a little bit of a smaller pattern than what you guys have because I'm really just here to kind of offer guidance as you're knitting. So don't worry if yours doesn't look exactly like mine, yours is probably gonna be bigger but we're just gonna keep casting on for a few minutes. So again, 
And as you get comfortable with this, feel free to just sort of move at your own pace, cast on as you feel comfortable, but no more than 38 stitches with each loop, including the first one being a stitch. So now I have two, I'm gonna make number three, holding the needle in my right hand, I'm gonna stretch out my tail, I'm gonna hitchhike my thumb, I'm gonna go under and back up, I'm gonna put my needle at the crease of my thumb and slide it under the yarn so that my thumb is hitched to my needle. I'm gonna put my needle in my left hand, take my infinity yarn, the stuff that's still attached to this dude. I'm gonna go behind and over the needle, almost like I'm trying to get my thumb stuck a second time. I'm gonna shift my needle back so that I've got this nice stretchy little loop. I'm gonna slide my thumb out so that I'm holding it lift it up and over. And then I'm gonna pull on one side and then kind of pull a little bit on the other. And that's stitch number three. That's interesting. So then do you do that a certain number of times? Is that, I, this is somebody who doesn't know anything about yeah. this. You should see her face right now. The way <laughs> she was like laughing at me was like great. Sorry, <laughs> I have an expressive face, so don't, yeah. I have no poker face whatsoever. So yeah, every pattern has a certain number of stitches that you cast on. In this case, it's 38 stitches, but you can change that. If, if you kind of look at this pattern a little bit, you can see it's kind of a longer dishcloth. It's a rectangle. If you wanted a smaller one, if you're like, oh, I just want a tiny itty bitty little square just to kind of put under a little plant, maybe you only cast on 25. So uh, it's just a number that kind of sets how long your piece is gonna be. So we're just gonna keep doing that. We're gonna lay this out. We're gonna Stretch it out, hitchhike our thumb under, put our needle in the crease, hitch our thumb to our needle, act like we're gonna do that one more time by going back and over. Gonna take our stretchy little bit and pop it over the top, pull on one side, pull on another, and now we have four. And I'm gonna do this until I have, I think I'm gonna do until I have 12, just so that you can begin to see what that looks like on your needle. So I'm at four, so stretch out, hitchhike my thumb under, stick my needle in the crease and hitch my thumb, put the yarn under and over my needle, Take my thumb loop, pop it over the top, pull and pull, and that's five. Stretch it out, hook your thumb under, put your needle in the crease, and hitch your thumb to your needle. Take your other yarn back and over. Take that thumb loop, pop it over the top, pull and pull. And as you get more comfortable, you'll find that you just kind of start doing it and it's really easy to just start casting them on. I feel like I would want to like put words to this, like, like thumb, like, so do, I'll, I'll do it as you go through. Yeah. Just like thumb, under, around from the back, and then floop. Exactly, <laughs> yes. Like, 
that's your, that becomes your, your, I'm gonna be funny and call it the mantra. Yes. That or you can think of it as height, pitch, crease, behind and over, over. I like saying floop. Yeah, floop, floop is, is really fun. <laughs> it's also very expressive. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So I'm gonna do two more. Is there any downside to leaving those looser or should you keep those tight or does it matter how, how they are? It really depends on your preference for how the final product's gonna end up. So the looser your stitches, the more give it's gonna have. So the way I like to think of it is if you're doing like a pot holder, you're gonna wanna do tight stitches because otherwise you're gonna have these gaps and when you touch a hot pot, it's gonna burn through. If you're doing a blanket and you want it to be breathable, you're gonna do looser stitches. I tend to do mine pretty tight, but I'm also using a really big needle so that you guys can see my stitches. So really whatever you have, is good if you're really brand new to it, air on the, on the looser side so that your hands don't cramp. I'm gonna do my last one. Loop. And so now you can kind of see I've got a nice little line of stitches. Is everyone with me so far? Yeah, so how's everybody see. doing? Thanks for joining us. Cool. Hopefully some people are getting something from it or they're just having a fun time hanging out while Emma uh, ties up her needle. I, I don't know. <laughs> As Emma probably gets wrapped up in a lot of yarn and has to be <laughs> untangled at a later date. You watch this back in, in like fast motion and you just progressively get wrapped up more and more in yarn. Yeah. I'm a knitting mummy. Cool. All right. So then is there something important coming up now? Yes, so I am gonna show you how to knit your first row. If you're following the pattern, obviously there are more stitches to be cast on. My recommendation is that really however many stitches you have cast on at this point, probably just go ahead and follow along with me because once you've learned how to do this, you can turn around and recast on as many as you want to make as many dishcloths as you want. So let's give everyone maybe 10 seconds, Sandy, just to wrap up whatever stitch you're casting on. And you can tell me when 10 seconds have passed because I apparently lack the ability to count. Count. One, two, ha, ha, ha. <laughs> that's, that's probably good. All right. So now that we've finished casting on our stitches, we're going to start using the second needle. And this is not as overwhelming as it sounds. I am horrible at hand-eye coordination, and I can do it. So <laughs> it's, it looks overwhelming, but really it's just the same two movements that'll happen over and over and over again. So in your left hand, you're going to hold the needle that has your stitches cast on. And in your right hand, you're going to hold the needle that does not have any stitches on. We're gonna sort of pull on our stitches so that we isolate the very top one. We're gonna take our right hand needle and we're gonna kind of slide it underneath so that they sit like this. They're, they're hitched together for better or for worse. Once we've done that, we're just gonna hold it. We're gonna take the yarn that's attached to our, our skein. 
we're gonna, just like we did when we were casting on, we're gonna loop it back and over. And now we're gonna take this, and we're just gonna slide that stitch, that first stitch on the left over so that now they're kind of crossed like they're fencing. And then we're gonna do what's called slip. So we're gonna take all of our stitches and we're gonna push them up towards the top so that this final loop, this really loose one we've been working with, we're just gonna pop it off. And it's gonna be terrifying because what you're gonna get is a bunch of loose string with a weird little knot in the middle. And it looks like you've just royally messed it up. But you're gonna take your yarn and you're gonna pull on the right side first. And then you're gonna go ahead and you're gonna pull on the left so that now you have what looks just kind of like this weird little loop on there. And we're just gonna do it again. You're gonna take your yarn, and you're gonna slide it into the next stitch that's now the top stitch on your left needle. You're gonna go behind and over. You're gonna take the stitch on the left needle and you're gonna loop it over the top. And then you're gonna push your needle, your stitches up until the top stitch on your left needle comes off. And you're gonna pull on the string that's attached to your ball of yarn. I'm gonna do it one more time so that you guys can see how it begins to look on your needles. So take the right hand needle, stick it under the top stitch on your left hand needle, tighten your yarn behind and over, take that left hand needle, make sure it just kind of gets a little loose, loop it over, and then we're just gonna kind of push at our stitches until that stitch comes off the left needle and then we're gonna go ahead and pull. And Andy, if you can get it in, kind of, I don't know if there's a way to get it in. Yeah, at an angle where they can kind of see what it looks like on the needle. But you should begin to see almost like this kind of infinity loop happening on the top of your stitches. Okay, awesome. And that means that you're doing it right. This is forming the bottom of your piece. Do we have any questions so far? Any questions so far about this? I think it looks like it should be getting closer. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's a lot closer. Perfect. Seeing none at the moment, and also um, be aware that you can always go back in this video um, later on. You can actually, uh, if you're watching on a phone or on a device, you should be able to use the slider at the bottom and kind of scrub backwards, and then you can always catch up. This video will still be uh, available um, later on. So we're zoomed in, we can see a little bit closer now. All right, so since no one has any questions yet, I'm gonna keep doing my stitches till I hit the end of mine. And you just keep doing stitches until you hit the end of yours. So however many you have cast on. I took my right needle, stuck it into the top stitch, taking my yarn, wrapping it behind and around, taking my left hand needle and looping the stitch over the top, and then I'm slipping it off and I'm tightening. 
and I'm just repeating that over and over. This is called a knit stitch. And this is one of the two foundational stitches of knitting. This is the only stitch that we're gonna learn tonight. Don't worry, I'm not gonna make you learn another stitch right away. And next, we've got the zigzag over the head double floop stitch. Stay tuned. <laughs> no. <laughs> but if you can knit stitch, you're halfway to being able to do any stitch, pretty much. There are all sorts of cool techniques you can learn later on down the line to make super fancy stitches. But if you can knit stitch, you, you can knit, you can do whatever you want. And see how it's starting to even form a little longer. It looks almost like a wave. That's amazing. It's just building. And so I'm gonna finish up here. Woo, did my stitches a little tight. It's called anxious hands, that's what it is. Yeah, the focusing is getting getting stuck on the page and not on your what you're doing instead. Hold, you can hold a, a little bit. Oh, back a little bit. There you go. That's perfect. There we go. It's it's focusing on the on the pattern. Oh, I can move. The Maybe flip it over. I can just move that off screen that because might, that might now that people have seen what it looks like. The pattern. Ooh, it's really tight. I think so, the paper was doing a really good job of keeping the color balanced because when you took that out, the color really changed. Oh no, do you want, do you <laughs> no, want me to put fine. it back? It's fine. <laughs> so I'm nearing the end here. If you find that your stitches are super tight or that your hands are cramping, just don't pull as tightly at the beginning and at the end of the stitch. Now, those of you who got a kit from EPL, you got these bamboo-ish sticks. And I did that because they cause less hand cramping than metal ones. So hopefully that's mitigating some of it. But there are also some really good exercises that you can do for your hands. So you go underneath. Yep, underneath. Yep. And then is that when you throw it around back again? Yep, around back. And then what you're doing now is you're still leaving that one on. Yep. Just put around, but then you're just putting it back behind the latest stitch on the left side. And yep. Pulling it off, basically. Okay. And then I'm just tightening it. So one last time here at the end, I'm inserting my right needle into the stitch on my left. I'm wrapping the yarn behind and over. I'm flooping the stitch on my left needle over onto the right one, and I'm pulling my left needle out and tightening. I've succeeded in making floop a thing. You have. And so now you can see I'm beginning to have kind of this little wave. And this is one row. I'm gonna check and see how many rows our pattern calls for while I wait to see if anyone has any questions. Ooh, 54 ro rows. We're not gonna do that many tonight. We're, we're, <clears throat> we're at 642 right now. So it's been 42 approximate minutes. Um, we're about 40 minutes with the time. Uh, I've gone back to the the thing here. So where is it that you're looking for how many rows on, on the, where is it on there? On my pattern, you can see. Go to, go to, oops. Oh. <laughs> there you go. Show it up there. There we go. You can see where it says instructions. <clears throat> it says knit 54 rows. And literally all you do to knit another row is see how you are again, you just have stitches on one needle. You take the needle that you just finished using and you start that knit stitch all over again. Oh. Oh, yeah, 
Oh, yep, and you just repeat that stitch. I'm gonna quickly do one row just so that you can see what it looks like as it starts to build up. And Andy, you'll let me know if there are any questions or concerns coming through. Yep, please make sure to ask questions, address your questions in, a, in an orderly fashion. Um, <laughs> I don't know, I'm just trying to be all whatever. By the way, please uh, feel free to sh hit the share button. Um, like this video, uh, that helps us uh, reach more people, which helps um, what we do go further. So not necessarily just this. Um, there's no direct, um, you know, we don't get, you know, money from, from, uh, from views and things like that, but it just helps us serve the community better. So share, like, subscribe. <laughs> subscribe if you're on YouTube, I like saying that. Also, down in that bottom left corner, there is epl.lib.in.us slash RDE. RDE stands for Redo Explore. Um, go ahead and uh, since you're watching this, you can, no matter how long, if you're participating, it doesn't matter. You don't need to be participating, but um, you can uh, enter to win one of the grand prizes. It's and, awesome. Yeah, there's some pretty cool things. Um, actually, ha, ha, ha. how's your... We have, have our second done? row done. Yeah. And see how now I basically have figure eights, this kind of little V-ish pattern in the middle, and then another row of figure eights. I've just done two rows. And my stitches are super loose because I wanted you guys to be able to see the definition. So if you look at yours and those are really tight little V's, don't worry. If so long as it has that V look in between the figure eights, you have done it correctly. Now, you're probably wondering, what am I supposed to do with the other color? We're gonna switch colors. And I know that sounds utterly terrifying. So you would switch colors after you do? After you do your 54 rows. So if you're following the pattern and it is available on the event page on Facebook. So if you don't have it yet, you can download it. Um, if you need to print it, you can come on into the library and get it printed. Once you've cast on 38 stitches, and then you've knit 54 rows. You okay. would do what's called breaking the main color. And what that is, is you're gonna take approximately the same length as your tail. So, so this says cast on 38 stitches, and that's saying that you would do 38 on that one needle? Yep. And then do another 38 and do that 54 times. Yep, so you're right. gonna do your 38 casting on, just creating that simple loop. And then you're gonna do the second needle and knit into those 38. And you're gonna do that 54 times. Interesting. And then once you've done that, you're gonna take your tail and hold it up against your yarn. And once you've got about that same length on the side with your yarn, if you have a scissors, you can use a scissors or you can just be the Hulk and just snap it. Yeah. And you're gonna leave this because if you just cut yarn when you're knitting, the moment that you finish your project, it's just gonna unravel. So we're gonna leave this because we're gonna weave it in later. But now we're gonna take our new color. Where does it begin slash end? There it is. <laughs> and we're gonna sit here. Are you having trouble finding the end of your 
the end of your str uh, string. Yeah. Come to Eckhart Public Library, where we have books on knitting. We do, actually. We have a lot of books on knitting. I'll bet any given person who is upstairs often can probably find where that uh, stuff is without even looking it up. 746 point. But you could three, four, three or something. <laughs> Seven. 746 little, point something. A little bit a little bit more accurate. Come on, Emma. That's <laughs> 746 point something. Yeah. <laughs> and if we don't have it here with uh, the Evergreen system with over 120 different Indiana libraries, we can get it for you. Yes. Just like that. Well, I mean, a little bit longer than a snap of the finger. So to change our color, we're going to take our new color. And hold. Do we have questions? I just have to look at it. Okay. Um, we're gonna do about the same amount of tail that we have left on our yarn. Because again, we're gonna kind of need to weave stuff in. And what we're gonna do, and this is going to feel very, very weird, is we're going to take the needle with our stitches in our left hand. And we're just gonna loop this over. And then we're gonna, I like that actually. We're gonna start by inserting, just like we're gonna do a knit stitch in our white yarn again, or our, for our main color. So it looks like this, right? We've hitched our needles together. And now we're going to take this yarn and we're just going to loop it over. So it just literally just sits on top of it, just like that. And then, ooh, now this is a very loose stitch, so don't panic. You're just going to slip it off. And it looks really weird. You can pull to tighten it. And that's your first stitch in a new color. And it's, it's gonna be loose. So the best thing to do is to just go ahead and just quick knit another stitch. And so now that you have your colors together, you're gonna take your right hand needle, stick it into the stitch on the left hand needle Take your new color behind and over, pop the stitch on the neck left needle over onto the right and slip it off. And then now you're gonna pull on your new color to tighten. I'm gonna do that a couple more times. Okay. No questions yet? Doesn't seem like there are any questions at the moment. Okay. Don't gonna... forget you can always watch this through later on. Um, you can send a, send us a, a message if you have any questions about them, if we need, uh, uh, any, need any uh, clarification. But then also, are there any groups around uh, yes. Auburn or DeKalb County that, that, that uh, people could go to if they have questions or yes. more, more other input and experience and we have uh, nifty knitters when we're able to do in person indoor programming at the library they have they hold their meetings here but right now since we're not able to do indoor in person programming at the library they've been holding theirs at a different location um i feel like it may be ninth street brew are there any nifty knitters out there that can confirm if they're meeting at Ninth Street Brew Coffee House right now? Uh, if so, that is that's downtown Auburn, on the southwest side of the Courthouse Square, formerly Jeremiah's. Yes. And we do have a. Um, uh contact information 
for that group. So if that's something that you're interested in, send us a message and we can forward your information to the group and have someone from there get in touch with you. Do we have any questions yet? Okay, I am going to very, very quickly knit a second row just so you can see what it looks like once we've got a full row in a new color. And then before we say goodbye, I'm gonna quick show you how to bind off, which is what you do to finish. So now you can see that the loops I'm putting on are in the new color. So I am now fully working in my new color. Yes. Okay. Sorry, I just, I didn't have the microphone on. Uh, bind off, I asked if bind off was the same as cast off, and that's what she said yes to. So knitting, so, some people call it bind off, some people call it cast off. Some of that is because, just like with crochet, um, in Europe they do things just a little differently, and some of it is vocabulary. So I forget which one is which, but one of, one of them is the American way of saying it, and the other is the British way of saying it, but it's the same concept. They probably knit with the left side instead of the right side. Yeah. The wrong side. <laughs> it's not. You can knit however you like. So, this is my final stitch here. That one. So now I've got, see kind of that seam on this side, but see how there's not one on the other side? So there are two sides of knitting. There's a right side and a wrong side. Didn't you just say there wasn't a wrong way? Yeah, I know, <laughs> I, know. I, I lied. <laughs> so see how I have this kind of this like little weird seam on this side? This, this tells you that it's the wrong side of your knitting. It's kind of like with embroidery where you have this beautiful front part, but if you turn around embroidery, you've got the back and it's all knotted and it's a mess. This is the back side of the embroidery. And then you have this front side and see how it's just this nice, easy, smooth transition. This is the front of the embroidery. This is the nice part. So once I am all ready, once I've done what I wanted and I'm ready to do what's called binding off or making sure that it doesn't completely unravel on me, I'm gonna do something that seems a little counterintuitive. I'm going to knit two stitches, just like I'm starting another row. So I'm gonna insert my right needle into the stitch on the left. I'm gonna go behind and over. I'm gonna floop my stitch over the top, slide it off and tighten. That's one. And I'm gonna repeat. So now I have two stitches. What I'm going to do is I'm gonna take my left hand needle and I'm gonna insert it into the bottom stitch on my right hand needle. The bottom one is the first one that you put over there? Yep. And I'm gonna take it, and this is kinda hard. You're gonna have to hold that top loop in place because you don't want the top loop to go anywhere. You're gonna take the bottom loop and you're gonna pop it over and then slide out your left needle. And now you have one loop when you tighten it. And what you've done is you've bound off or closed off that stitch. So you can't do anything with it anymore. And that's good. And then we repeat. So I take my stitch, my needles, and I knit another stitch. So that I, again, have two 
on here. Take my left hand needle and I insert it into the bottom stitch. I hold that top stitch in place and pop it over the top and off of the left needle and I tighten. And it'll look kind of weird as you, and this looks really weird because I didn't add as much color as I normally would before binding off. But again, the purpose here is just to kind of give you enough info on the stitches so that you can sit quietly and in your own time, uh, knit a dishcloth that does what you want it to do. So I'm just gonna keep going on down my stitches. Always knitting an extra stitch after I've slipped one off. And see how you're starting to see this second little edge on here? That's the bind off. So now you have, this is the top of your project. And I have a few more stitches left to do. So you're kind of like tie, uh, knitting it to itself, sort of? Yep, I'm, I'm just making sure that when I go and I, when I undo it, it's not as loose and ready for another thing to be knit into it. Zoom back out again here. Playing fast notes, right? <laughs> so I'm just wrapping up, making sure that this is all ready to go. So how many times do you do that? Do you do that just for however many? However many stitches. Okay. So in this pattern, uh, it would be 38? Yep. All right. And then when you hit your final one, and this is what we're at now, this is our last stitch. So there's no way for me to knit another stitch. Then take this. And I knit until I now have two loops on here. And this is where I'm gonna put this down and just kind of grab a needle to help me because I'm gonna break my thread and carefully slip these off. and hold these two loops together. And mine are loose enough that I can use my fingers. If you have tighter stitches, you'll thread it through a needle and use the needle. <laughs> okay, so I just inserted it through and then I pulled. So now I have this. This is a little piece of knitting. It's very loose because I made my stitches loopy. And see how we have all of these on the end? Well, we don't want all of those on the end. So this is where we do what we call our weaving in. How much time do I have, Andy? Uh, Okay, I'll move fast. Um, this is thick yarn, so I don't know if it'll actually even go in the needle. Let me do this yarn. I ask very little of you, that's fine. 
There we go. And so I'm just gonna take my needle and I'm gonna insert it in a weave pattern back and forth. along the edge. Pulling that yarn through. Really just kind of following the same pattern that's already existing. Now, now everyone's heard me snore while I laugh. Fantastic. Here we go. So, see how it almost looks like I did like a second knitting over here? Looks just a little thicker. It's cause I'm sticking the needle into first the right hand side of the figure eight and I'm pulling the yarn through. And then I'm hopping over to the left hand side of the figure eight and I'm pulling the yarn through. And I'm just doing that basically for every stitch that I did. So the longer the pattern, the more you'll do this. But see how it's kind of tightening it up as I go? This is taking that bound off edge and basically making it so thick that you, you, you can't really, it's hard to go back in there and knit into it, which is what you want. So I'm just gonna quick wrap up here. Whew. And once that's done, I just go, I hold it there. And I just kind of, create a tight knot. And I just pull until it makes the tight knot that I want right at the edge so that it's just gonna bleed, blend into what you've done. And then this is where, if you actually had a scissors, you'd do it nice. But I'm just gonna, oops, pull it off. It so yes, this will be this will be available later. This will be both. Uh, this should exist uh, as it's as that same the same video on Facebook, and then it will be available on YouTube, uh, posted probably tomorrow as well. Yep. And these last tails that you're wondering about, we're just gonna do the same thing. If you have a really big yarn, if you buy like a really a really big needle, just thread them all through and do the same thing on the bottom side of it so that both sides are that tight knit on top. So you do that with the with the little needle, the little yep. needle? Okay. And my needle is way too thin for me to fit three pieces of yarn into. But if you go to any craft store, you can buy what's actually like a weave-in needle and it's big enough to fit yarn into. And you just do it top and bottom until every stitch has, it has now this kind of nice firm feel versus a loose wavy feel. Cool. And you have knit a piece. Awesome. A tiny piece, but it's yes. Yeah. Piece. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that shows you how to do it, right? Yeah. Um, yeah, so if, if people would like to, um, let's see, people want to do more things like that, like this, just let us know and we'll do more things like this. Yeah, I'll, I'll be happy to. Whether it's streamed on here or uh, whether we do something like this in person. Yeah. <laughs> once, once we get to that point. Yes, well, 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 once we get there. Have you, what was, what, what have you made? Have, have you had any kind of notable things that you, fun things, challenging things, uh, simple but effective things? I like to knit uh, b baby booties because a lot of women's care centers will accept 
hand knitted items like baby booties, uh, baby hats, baby blankets, stuff like that. And then they can kind of gift them to expectant mothers as they are closer to their due date. So that's what I like to do in my spare time. Um, I have a really easy pattern that I use now. The first baby booty that I knit, I picked a really, really advanced pattern and it took me forever. So I, I definitely recommend finding a pattern that suits how, how comfortable you are because otherwise it just gets really, really frustrating. Cool. Awesome. You did it guys. Cool, well uh, thank you everybody for watching. Uh, again, make sure you share this. Uh, share this with your family, friends. Um, did you have fun? Oh, I did. Cool. I did. I you loved got, it. You got a great job, so that's pretty cool. <laughs> Thank you. Awesome. Bye, everyone.